Now, there's a, another Egyptian, there's many Egyptian texts, particularly from the 12th dynasty Egyptian literature, and there's a reconstruction. Ivan, uh, is it Manuel, I think, Velikovsky did a reconstruction. His son also did some work on um, Moses in the 12th uh, dynasty Egyptian literature, a whole series of literature from that's dated from the 12th uh, dynasty that has many correspondences to the to the Hebrew story and to the story of, in particular, the Exodus, but also Moses, Moses' possible Egyptian character, if not as well uh, Joseph, though Joseph is usually linked with Ayimhotep, Imhotep. If not Imhotep the person, then the order of Imhotep or Ayimhotep or Yimhotep. But there's another text that correlates uh, to the Joseph dream prediction. And now this is found in what's known as the so-called Book of the Dead or the Pert M. Haru. And what's also very interesting about the Book of the Dead or the Pert M. Haru is that the Pert M. Haru means coming forth by day. It means coming forth by day. And if we once again look at this chapter, let's bring up this chapter here. This is the 13th chapter of Exodus. We like to actually call it the Matrix chapter because we find Matrix first mentioned in the King James Bible in this chapter. If we go from verse 19 to verse 20, the names Sukkot and Esam are also interesting. All the names are very interesting because within them, if we mine them, is, 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 a, is a matrix. It's a virtual womb of, 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 of children, of ideas embedded within that linguistic mitochondrial DNA, so to speak. But on the Pert M. Haru, the Pert M. Haru, if we look at these two verses right here, verse 21 and 22, um, let's go through it right here. It says, Bekenana beleilitim yehedu zent menged liya sayacho ken bedemana amd liya beralacho wema leilit beisat amd egeziavihir befitacho hede. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Even in the English, there's, there's an interesting rhyme scheme in, in the, the English version of this, but the key is, that the Lord, right, the Lord went, he went before them, went before them, what, by day, right, and by night, the coming forth by day, some say, and by night, or what has been falsely called, according to the European uh, Egyptian madness, um, the European madness about Egypt, the Book of the Dead, though the only thing that dealt with the dead is that the Europeans robbed these uh, sacred texts and scrolls and other documents from um, our ancestors and, and, and the Egyptian ancestors' graves without any sort of permission. That's why they called it the Book of the Dead. But the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the Pert Im Haru, is linked here in chapter 13 in these two verses. Second verse, 22. Yedemana armed be ken, ye isat armed be leilit, ka hizbu afit katofek ek alalem. Katofek ek alalem. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night 
from before the people. Now, of course, most under the alien, the ancient alien theories would view this in some alien um, proportion or extraterrestrials, and that might be somewhat true, but what is definitely a key link, both with the matrix being in this chapter and in the key phraseology we have coming forth or going forth or went before, went before them by day, coming forth by day, and we also have by night. So they're coming out of something. They're coming out of something. I've called my what? Son out of Egypt. So when we look at now the Egyptian or the Kamite Pur Im Haru, the so called Egyptian, ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead, which is described as being a popular loose collection of formulas and, and prayers, the Europeans called them spells, that were copied in parts in many tombs, has been an interesting illustration. When we go to chapter C X L V I I I or Chapter 148 of the Perth M. Haru, or the Book of the Dead. Um, Budge has a version, but what we're going to do is look at, look at um, Renault, or Renolf, Renolf's uh, version right here. And here in Renolf's version, we have notes to uh, Chapter 148. And so I want you to get a, a visual of this particular page and the associated artwork in black and white right here. All right, so we're going to focus on the, bring it back up to the top right here. Now, in this chapter, chapter 148, there's a drawing, a drawing that you're looking at and other similar drawings that depict seven cows each with a solar disc between the horns and each with a sheaf of wheat in front. Also, there's a strange little symbol that resembles or can be said to resemble a, a comet. Do you see it that's depicted above each cow, above each cow, something that looks like a, a comet which is depicted above each cow, at least that's what it seems to resemble, not only does this remarkably coincide and link with Iusif or Yosef's uh, seven cow, seven sheaves of wheat dream prediction, the Hilm, the Tinbeat prophecy, but it also lends credence to Velikovsky's recurrent cow comet theory. Emmanuel Velikovsky, in his work about Moses' 12th dynasty, Egyptian literature, and reconstructions of, of ancient Egypt from a non traditional um, European whitewash version, actually adds much to clarifying the half of the story that has been covered up and suppressed and therefore not told. Now, the solar disk, what do the solar disk represent? The solar disk represents the celestial prediction that matches Joseph's deathbed visit cow prediction. The exact dating of the Book of the Dead, the so-called Book of the Dead, or the Pert M. Haru, is not available. And Egyptian chronology, especially from a whitewashed European uh, perspective, is just totally, totally confusing. In other words, the chronology, that's one of the serious areas that Velikovsky and others, people more tackling or beginning to tackle the chronology and a lot of the errors in the dating of ancient Egypt and the Bible. That's why they can't find what they allegedly say is not there. Other than the fact that the Book of the Dead, what we do know about the Pert M. Haru is that it was 
from the old kingdom, at least from the old kingdom, from Yimhotep or Ayimhotep's his long era. And when we speak of Ayimhotep, we basically are also speaking of Joseph. So Joseph, Yosef is Ayimhotep or of the order of Ayimhotep and Yimhotep, Ayimhotep's seven cows and seven year famine are the same as Joseph's prediction and his dream. So Musa, Moses, he began writing what we know as the first books of the Bible, the Old Testament Torah, with Ha Elohim's, the true gods creating everything in seven days, in in a cycle of seven days. Now this choice or decision of seven days is very, very curious and it's a key. Because we still have a seven day week. Even presently in this modern time, we still have a seven-day week with a day of rest that marks the resting of Ha Elohim after he, quote, finished or perfected the fitret or the creation. Now, this theme of seven days, it runs through the entire five books of Moses or Torah the Orit, until we get to Fasika, until we get to the Passover, Pesach, which is the final seventh day of the seven-day phases when Ha Elohim rested, which we find in Genesis chapter 2 at verse 2. So evidently, Musa or Moses he was using this word, fitret, or creation, in order to document fasika, in order to document the Passover event, as we would use even today the word destruction. Astronomically, when we look at it from now the heavens, you understand, know from, from the heavens or from the heavenly, astronomically, Ha Elohim had allowed the earth and the and the so-called world to survive seven of these predictable, predictable events. That's why they talk about what's going on with the weather patterns. Is it the end time? Is it the Mayan calendar? Or are these predictable events? Are these events that happened before? Both of those are partially true, but not in the context. It's out of context, the way they present it to us. They say either it's this or that, but when we learn the truth, we get to see how both are correct in their proper context. Moses learned of these catastrophic events from the historic Egyptian and ancient Tobian, Ethiopian records and then later, he used symbolic logic or symbolically or what I like to call verbal hieroglyphics in a sense or Hebraic Afro-Shemitic hieroglyphics or the linguistics of the language, the seminar work, to detail them when he wrote the Torah, the Orit. So the word creation, fitaret, is very, very important, the word creation. And there's a, in Romans, there's a very important New Testament link that we can expand on this as we look to the futures or the possible futures. And then he, Ha Elohim, he stopped them. He stopped these catastrophic events that came to the event horizon and, and the earth had went through these these judgments, these what seemed to be judgments and what were for those who were unprepared and not in the right spiritual state of mind. So he stopped them. He stopped these events. And this is what it means when it says that he rested. He rested. This explains the desita. The, 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 the joy 
after Fasica, the threats were finally over. The earth was safe. Thus, we keep the seventh day, Yetekedese, forever and ever.